Hello children, today we are starting the second topic of chapter 8 animals everywhere. The topic is feeding in animals. Last class we discussed about breathing in anim animals, different breathing organs of different animals, land animals, water animals and all. Today the topic is feeding. Feeding means having food. So animals, not only animals, all living things eat food, isn't it? Animals, we have food in order to grow, to get energy and to stay healthy. All animals, including human beings, have food. We eat different types of food. And according to this type of food, our mouth parts are changed or they are adapted according to the food we eat. So feeding habit of an animal and the mouth parts of an animal are closely related to the food that they eat. So today we learn about the different animals living in different places eating different types of food and how their feeding habits are. That is the organs of breathing. First one is rodents. Rodents are animals like squirrel, mice, rabbit, rat and all. In this picture it is clear that the teeth are small and sharp. They are very small animals, isn't it? Rat, mice, squirrel and all very small animals and they have small teeth which is sharp. Actually, they know the seed, G-N-A-W, they know the seeds. Knowing means what? Repeated biting. You have seen carrot bitten by a rabbit, isn't it? How is it? It repeatedly bites the food item. That repeated biting is called knowing. So normally, rodents know the seeds or fruits. Some animals, some uh, rat, squirrel and all, they eat seeds also. So they know the seeds and fruits with the help of their small sharp teeth. Even though it is, it is small, we can see that it is sharp. They have sharp teeth so that they can bite the food item faster. Second type of animal is herbivores. You all have already studied about what are herbivores. Herbivores are plant eaters. They eat the leaves or different parts of the plant. So herbivores, they need to bite the food item, that means bite the leaf and chew the food. So here I have shown the picture of the mouth of a cow, the teeth of a cow. It has sharp front teeth to bite the leaves, otherwise it, it needs a lot of time to bite the leaves. So at one cut itself, it needs to get that leaf in its mouth. So it has sharp front teeth and strong broad teeth for chewing. The leaves should be chewed and for that it has strong, broad, grinding teeth also. So herbivores, which are plant eaters, they have sharp front teeth to bite the food item and strong grinding teeth to chew the food item. Next is carnivores. Carnivores, they are flesh eating animals. They kill their uh, prey and they eat the flesh of animals. So, uh, they cannot have their food if they have biting teeth, sharp biting teeth. They need to tear the flesh, isn't it? So, for tearing, they have strong, sharp, hooked or curved tearing teeth. See, I have shown the picture of the mouth of a lion. The teeth is very sharp and curved or hooked in order to tear the flesh and eat. And same way like uh, herbivores, they have strong grinding teeth also. Because we know that it is much difficult to chew the flesh of animals, isn't it? Chicken and all, it is very difficult to chew it. So you need a strong and broad grinding teeth to chew the flesh. So carnivores have sharp, pointed and curved front teeth for tearing flesh. And strong broad teeth for chewing food. See, you can see tearing teeth and chewing teeth. Okay? Third one is, next one is carnivorous birds. Carnivorous birds does not have teeth, isn't it? Have you seen any bird with teeth in its mouth? No. They have beak. I have shown the picture of a carnivorous bird. Carnivorous birds are birds which feed on the flesh of other animals. They have strong, sharp and hooked beaks. 
see this is the b strong we can see from the picture itself it is very clear that it is a very strong beak isn't it we can see that it is made of a very strong thing it appears to be strong okay so strong sharp and hooked beaks just like a hook it catches the prey with the hook and just tears the flesh okay so hook beaks and sharp claws sharp claws to catch the prey and kill it okay so if the claws are sharp by the time the prey, the, it catches the prey the, it starts bleeding the prey will starts bleeding and it will be killed so these are the adaptations given to these carnivorous birds in order to fetch their food every animal have the right to uh, eat its food isn't it so uh, sometimes it may be by hurting other animals but that is uh, the food chain or that is a balance of nature they are created like that so they are uh, their body parts are adapted in such a way that they can get their food faster so carnivorous birds have strong sharp and hooked beaks and sharp claws to catch their prey next one is movement in animals so we learned about feeding in animals feeding in animals we learned about rodents which is a small animals like rat mice and squirrel which uh, know the seeds and fruits then herbivores and carnivores herbivores are plant eaters they have sharp biting teeth and strong chewing teeth then the carnivores they are flesh eaters they have sharp hooked be uh, teeth to tear the flesh and strong grinding teeth then another class of animals called carnivorous birds they have strong sharp and hooked beaks and sharp claws to catch their prey and we know that there is another set of animal called omnivores but there is a mix of both of these herbivores and carnivores so we human beings are actually omnivores we have both types of teeth isn't it? we have biting teeth tearing teeth and chewing teeth so omnivores will have a mix of all these teeth together okay so next is movement in animals animals if they want to get their food food will not come to them they are not sitting in a hotel or something uh, like uh, ordering food and getting it they have to go and fetch their food they have to get their food they have to run behind their and that prey and then catch that prey kill that prey a lot of hard work is needed so what happens is they move from one place to another for many reasons the first and foremost thing is to get their food in search of food second one is if there are enemies coming and attacking them they need to protect themselves and their babies from being hunted so in order to protect or for protection they move from one place to another when somebody comes to kill you will you stand in front of them like that no what you will do you will run from there wherever you see a way you will go through that so same way they also move from one place to another in order to protect themselves and their babies from being hunted and the third main reason is that they move from one place to another to find a resting and breeding place it means a proper place a peaceful place to take rest and to breed that means to produce their young ones to give birth or to lay eggs they so these are the important reasons for animals to move from one place to another first one is in search of food second one to protect themselves and their babies from being hunted and the third one is to build resting and breeding places breeding or reproduction is an important process for that they need to find a peaceful and safe place so they may move from one place to another but they will not move in groups it will be one family or one animal that moves from one place to the other So now we have we can learn about how different animals living in different habitats move. We have already learned what is a habitat. Habitat is the natural home of an animal where it lives and grows. It can be on land, in water, anywhere. So we can learn about how these animals move. Okay? First is the case of land animals. Land animals mainly use their limbs to move have you heard about the word limbs limbs are actually hands and legs or front legs and back legs we can tell as hands and legs only in the case of human beings isn't it all other animals they move on four legs so we can call front legs and back legs okay two types of limbs are there four limbs it is mentioned here four limbs and hind limbs 
four limbs are the front legs suppose you take a cat or a dog in mind picture you can see it has front legs and back legs front legs is called four limbs and back legs is called hind limbs so in case of humans this is our front legs that means our hands and this the one with which you walk is called your hind legs or hind limbs that is your legs okay so we learn about it in detail so mainly land animals uses its four limbs or hind limbs to move four limbs are front legs and hind limbs are back legs in case of water animals there are different variations that goes on in water animals so i'll just explain it to you with the help of examples fish it moves with its fins okay fin is the organ of movement for fish okay so fish you can see several um, what is it a labeling and all don't bother about that just uh, remember the two paired fins helps the fish to move forward the two paired fins are pectoral fin and pelvic fin pectoral fin and pelvic fin are the paired fins of a fish and this paired fins helps the fish to move forward okay move front swim front then the two unpaired fins the unpaired fin that is a dorsal fin and the anal fin the unpaired fin will help the fish to maintain balance in nature so paired fins help the fish to move forward unpaired fin helps to maintain balance and tail fin this is the third one tail fin third one tail fin helps to change the direction of movement so these fins together they are called fins fins helps the fish in movement the two paired fin helps to move forward the unpaired fin helps to ba make balance in nature uh, balance in water and tail fin helps to change the direction of movement so this is how a fish moves in water second one is turtle turtle have paddle like limbs see you can see paddle like limbs a little bit broader limbs the paddle like limbs helps it to push the water back and to move forward pushing the water back and moving forward is swimming isn't it so that is done with the help of paddle like limbs see i have written here paddle like limbs of a turtle so fish uses its fins for swimming and turtle uses its paddle like limbs to swim now next is penguin penguin uses its flippers four limbs as flippers four limbs means front legs this is the front legs of a penguin it is used as flippers that is a special name given to that that four limbs just like we have the four limbs modified as hands they have the four limbs modified as flippers and that flippers is moved uh, that pushes the water back which helps the penguin to move forward i've shown the picture of a penguin swimming also it uses its flippers or the four modified four limbs for moving in water okay and when it is on uh, land that means in the snow it uses its hind limbs that means your its legs is used for walking okay next one is a frog frog has a webbed feet you have already learned about what is a webbed feet isn't it webbed feet is they will have a flap of skin in between the fingers see it is very clear from this these are the fingers and they have a flap of yellow colored you can see a yellow colored thing actually it is a pale color so here it is very dark yellow shown it is yellow color the thing is called a flap of skin that is a webbed feet see normally when you swim in water when you move, put your fingers with gap like this and try to push water back water will pass through these gaps of your fingers and you will not be able to move forward but instead if you hold the hand like this normally we swim with the hands fingers closed isn't it when you keep your fingers closed and then when you push the water back you can see that the water is pushed back properly and you are able to move forward so same way they are also given webbed feet because frogs are amphibians they live both on land and in water so on land they can use their back legs or hind limbs okay the back legs are used in 
on land to jump they normally jump isn't it frog so that is used on land and four limbs or front legs are used to move in water i'll tell once again in frogs they have webbed feet the four limbs or front legs help to push water back while they are swimming and the hind limbs or back legs helps it to jump on land okay now next just movement in animals so we discussed about land animals and water animals land animals they use their four limbs and hind limbs to move some animals use four limbs uh, and hind limbs like dogs cats and all some animals use only hind limbs like human beings only hind limbs back legs are used and we learned about movement in water animals like a uh, fish uses its fin a uh, turtle uses its paddle like limb, uh, limbs then a penguin uses its flippers and frog uses its web feet next is the case of insects insects are actually six legged creatures okay six legs are there you can count it okay six legged creatures and these legs are used for crawling have you seen any insect walking no they normally crawl with their legs especially ant they will crawl on the ground with their legs six legs then we have grasshopper grasshopper the main uh, specialty of grasshopper is that it hops isn't it it jumps and go that is hopping of grasshopper so that hopping is done with the help of hind limbs you can see a long back legs that is used for hopping by a grasshopper the next one is an insect called water boatman that is a water insect the speciality of this insect is that it swims in water with its limbs as oars you can you have seen oars which you used to push water back in a, uh, what is boat and all isn't it so just like that this water boatman uses its legs as oars for pushing water back and moving forward that is why it is called water boat man okay so in case of insects they are six legged creatures some of them crawl some of them hop and some of them uh, swim in water with the help of their legs the main thing is that normally insects crawl okay but some insects you can see them flying around you isn't it they have wings to fly wings are special modifications in the body of animal to fly is it but are their wings same as that of a hen or uh, any other bird no they are just small scale like structures see small scale like colored structures are the wings present in insects they are not like bird they are attached to the strong chest muscles the chest muscles helps the wings to move no other muscles bones feathers nothing is there like the bird they are just these feathers of insects are just scales colored scales that are attached to strong muscles in the body of the insect and these muscles helps it to flap okay and there are insects which do not have wings also uh, lice bed bugs and all they do not have wings it is not necessary that an insect should have wings some of them crawl some of them fly okay next is movement in birds that is a very different thing birds they have their four limbs that means the front legs modified to very beautiful wings wings are soft and beautiful it helps the bird to fly the wings of a bird have strong muscles in it and that is attached to the breast bone of a bird the strong muscles attached to the breast bone helps the bird to flap its wings and fly it can travel distance some birds can travel from from one country to the other using their wings they are very strong muscles that are present in the wings so that is actually their four limbs or front legs modified modified version is actually wings and they have their legs or hind limbs for walking hopping perching scratching on the ground and all so birds they have four limbs modified to wings and hind limbs for walking and for other purposes 
they are able to fly because their bones are hollow you have learned already last year isn't it bones bo birds bones are hollow nothing will be there inside that makes its body lightweight which helps it to fly in the air otherwise even if the wings have strong muscles the wings cannot bear the weight of the whole body isn't it so that is why the uh, animals uh, are not able to fly when we put some wing like things in our body also we cannot fly because our body weight is too much but birds they have hollow bones which make their body lightweight and helps them to fly but even though some animals like uh, kiwi ostrich emu and all they are birds but they have their body weight is too much or their wings are not strong enough whatever be the reason some birds will not be able to fly or some birds do not fly because sometimes their uh, wings will be weak sometimes their body weight will be too much you have seen an ostrich isn't it ostrich is a very tall bird so that we, when we say that ostrich or emu itself we can see that the body weight is too much and they have a normal wings according to their size so what happens is the wings or the muscles of the wings will not be able to bear the whole weight body weight so that is why they are not able to fly so even though we tell that in uh, birds the forelimbs are modified to wings we cannot say that all birds can fly with wings there are birds with wings which cannot fly also so this is a speciality or the movement in birds so what helps the bird to fly it is actually the hollow bones that makes its body light weight clear see i have shown the picture of a bird with wings and legs so both are present fore limbs as uh, wings and hind limbs as legs to both fly and walk next is reptiles reptiles like lizard crocodiles and all they have legs in their body but they use it for crawling we can't believe it isn't it even though they have uh, legs they use it for crawling then what is the use of having these legs that is how they are adapted according to their lifestyles okay they have scales in their body uh, which helps them to move for example snakes i have shown the picture of uh, scales on a snake's body snakes have scales on their body snake is also a reptile but is, does not have uh, legs to crawl okay snakes have scales or plate like things under their body which is attached to their ribs okay and when they move the scales act like the feet and the ribs act like legs that is how they move so when the scales move or slide the movement in a snake is possible and it has strong flexible backbone and strong muscles even though it is very small and flexible thing uh, it has strong muscles and flexible backbone which helps it to move in a zigzag way can we move like a snake no our body will not be flexible because our backbone is stiff and straight only bending is possible but their backbone is very flexible that is why they are able to move in any way that they want so this is all about movement in reptiles so reptiles like uh, lizards crocodile and all they move with the help of their legs they crawl snakes move with the help of their scales and there comes the most developed among all animals that is we the human beings we have the well developed system for movement human beings they are able to bear the whole weight of their body in their hind limbs alone and that is why we walk with the help of legs our hands or fore limbs are modified to hands with which you can hold the things lift the things and do any kind of work we have an adaptation like four fingers against one thumb finger isn't it when you hold your finger you can see one thumb and against that you have four fingers isn't it so that helps us to hold the things tightly without leaving it from our hand can you imagine a situation when the, all the fingers are alike in the same position are we able to uh, hold it properly or just imagine holding a thing like this without using the thumb finger it will not be strongly held only if we use our thumb also to hold it it is strongly held in our hand so that is an adaptation 
for helping us to do our box otherwise we would not be able to lift anything we will not be able to do any work hold anything in our hand also so that is adaptations according to the lifestyle that we have we normally go for work isn't it have you seen any wild animals going to work in a factory and all no we are adapted like that in order to live properly by working and earning so that is what we told in the beginning of the session the movement of animals or the modifications for movement in animals or the modifications in the body of animals whatever is the part the modifications or adaptations are just related to their habitat related to the habitat means it can be the way it grows the way it eats the way it does work and so on so these are the feeding and movement in animals so i'll just recall what we have studied first was feeding in animals like uh, rodents they know the seeds and fruits then herbivores they have strong sharp biting teeth and strong grinding teeth carnivores they have uh, strong sharp curved teeth uh, to tear the flesh and uh, strong grinding teeth to chew the flesh then carnivorous birds they have sharp hooked beaks uh, and claws to catch their prey then we learned about movement in animals movement in land animals water animals insects birds reptiles and human beings in land animals they use their forelimbs and hind limbs water animals fish use fin turtle use paddle like uh, limbs then penguin use flippers and frog use web feet then uh, the next was insects they are six leg creatures which uh, crawl with their legs some insects have wings some insects uses its legs as oars for swimming uh, grasshopper uses its hind limbs for hopping then uh, we learned about birds they have four limbs modified to feathers and hind limbs for walking uh, wings have strong muscles attached to the breastbone of the body of a bird they have hollow body which makes it lightweight then is reptiles reptiles have scaly body which helps them to move snakes are uh, reptiles which have scales under their body other reptiles like lizards uh, uh, crocodile and all they have legs but they crawl on the ground and the last one is the most developed among all animals are human beings we have hind limbs for walking and four limbs or our, our hands to uh, take things hold things and fight or defense when somebody comes to attack us so uh, it is a bit large topic and i hope you have understood just read the textbook it becomes more clear for you okay thank you